Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. Four and a half billion years ago, a vast celestial body slammed into the young Earth. The violence of the impact flung a cloud of debris into orbit. Gravity did the rest, forming the Earth's natural satellite, the Moon. So the only celestial body that man has explored in person consists mainly of the elements which made up the Earth. And there are plenty of moons in the solar system. The moons in the solar system are a very special objects. They also have a tradition in determining our view, how we see the world. Galileo in 1610, he was the first to observe the moons of, I of, of Jupiter. And when he did this, then a really a revolutionary activity started in history. And today they are worlds on their own rights. And sometimes I wonder if this is the kind of world where even life might exist somehow. 650 million kilometers away, NASA's Galileo probe spent eight years exploring Jupiter and its four moons from 1995. The sulfurous volcanic inferno of Io. And Europa, lurking in the coldest part of the system, hidden beneath its frozen crust, an immense liquid ocean. In December 2000, the joint NASA and European Space Agency mission Cassini-Huygens took the first ever high-resolution photos of Jupiter and its moons as it passed by towards its main goal, Saturn, its rings and its system. Every detail of a mission 1.3 billion kilometers from Earth takes on immense complexity. Tilman Denk from the Free University of Berlin explains how they line up the probe's instruments for best results. The cameras are body fixed, so you see the cameras here and in this model. And if you are looking on a, a, a the surface, for instance, if you are on the surface like this here, then the camera is looking exactly at you. But if you want to look on the side, then you have to turn the whole spacecraft, this, which weighs several tons. And this, this is called attitude, and this has to be defined by the scientists and the people that are doing the observations. Okay, Launched in 1997, it took seven years for Cassini-Huygens to reach Saturn's orbit on a mission scheduled to last until 2011. At the Paris Murdon Observatory, Athena Kustinis is in charge of research at Lysia, the laboratory for space studies and astrophysical instrumentation. Saturn's moons fascinate her. Today we have about 56 of these moons discovered, and each one of them is a jewel in the solar system and in the Saturnian system. They're extraordinary, they're active. Saturn and its system is an active system. There are interactions between the moons and the rings, and between the rings, the moons, and the planet. So it's everything an astronomer could imagine, could hope for. Millions of lumps of rock and ice orbiting the gaseous planet like an army of mini-moons. Cassini-Huygens also captured the first images of Phoebe, the most distant of Saturn's satellites. And it revealed the pristine beauty of Enceladus, the ice moon with its enigmatic ice volcanoes at its south pole. At the Free University of Berlin, they're examining the craters made by meteorites crashing into Iapetus, another of Saturn's moons, and the fictional destination of the mission in the film 2001 A Space Odyssey. Discovered in 1671 by the astronomer Jean-Dominique Cassini, Iapetus has become the focus of Tilman Denk's studies. The icy celestial body, 1,500 kilometers in diameter, poses plenty of questions. There are a lot of interesting features on the surface. The most interesting one, and the one that is also very puzzling, since one 
third to one half of the surface is almost as dark as coal, while the other half or a little more than half of the other part of the surface has the brightness of snow. Images taken from the probe in 2004 reveal an intriguing feature, a kind of icy ridge which makes the apertus look something like a walnut. This ridge is exactly at the equator, but interestingly it's not going around the whole circumference. So it's, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's about 20 kilometers high, so it's a really huge uh, elevation that you have there. And then at some uh, places it's a continuous ridge, then at others it's isolated mountains, and then suddenly it becomes bright mountains and not dark anymore, so it's a very diverse feature. And then there's Titan. Saturn's biggest and most fascinating moon. In January 2005, the European lander Huygens separated from Cassini. It set down as planned and on time. And what it sent back stunned the scientific world. We discovered that there was a whole new world waiting for us because we knew something about Titan's atmosphere, but we don't, didn't know much about its surface. And here we come through the Titan atmosphere, we land on the surface, and we find not only hydrocarbons that we thought, but we find lakes, we find dunes, we find mountains, we see clouds, enormous clouds and storms coming through the atmosphere. And so this is a fascinating object. Could life evolve on such an object different than the Earth with a different chemistry? Um, can we find geological processes that we didn't know of on Earth because they look similar, but they're made of different material and so on? Huygens had barely a few minutes on Titan's hostile surface, but in that time, it opened new horizons. We feel like discoverers, you know, adventurers going out there. Um, and I think that's what the, the, um, the revelations from Cassini Huygens showed us for Titan. It's that there are other worlds out there to be discovered. There, there are other objects that, and we don't know everything about the solar system. We really need to investigate. And with so many moons, there's plenty more exploration to be done by these Christopher Columbuses of the galaxy.